Hello, everyone. And as everybody was saying, I'm super excited to see, to attend an in-person conference after, after a while. Uh, many of the people whom we have interacted over Zoom, it's good to see them face to face. Um, I'm part of the data platform team at Twitter. And when we say Twitter, a lot of things are happening right now about Twitter, <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> so, uh, but we from data platform are more excited about the beam uh, in this talk. We'll talk about our adoption, um, the challenges, and then future for beam. If you have used Twitter, that means you're a real user, not a bot. <laughs> so you would be exposed to you be exposed to the Twitter timelines uh, curated for, by your interest. You'll be exposed to all the interactions. On the right hand side, you'll see a lot of recommendations around who to follow um, or the recommended tweets. Somewhere in there, in settings sections, there is a product called Analytics, which will give you a lot of information about the tweet, the engagements, followers, and a little bit of historical analysis. There are also similar features for advertisers. Um, and uh, there are more features around trends, search, explore. The reason why I'm saying all this is, is to say that all these products are either directly or indirectly are dependent on data processing requirements. Um, so pretty much you take any product on Twitter, they, are, they need some kind of data processing. And at, uh, as a data platform, we support a various different kinds of tools and services to satisfy those needs. If you consider stream processing, from the very beginning, Twitter has uh, open sourced Apache Storm and later migrated to Apache Heron. For batch processing, we run a lot of scalding, a lot of heavy scalding jobs, which is a uh, Scala layer on top of cascading, um, as explained earlier. We have uh, use cases on Spark and Tez, and all of them running on huge uh, Hadoop clusters. We have also some SQL use cases with Presto and Hive. And in the recent years, we have been expanding um, our use cases on Google Cloud, utilizing Dataflow, BigQuery, and GCS. As you can see, there are a lot of products uh, and projects uh, we depend on open source. Thousands of developers uh, consume and contribute to open source software uh, for various different open source organizations. And as somebody, some people say, Twitter wouldn't have been a place where it is now without the help of open source software. Right. Apart from the variety of uh, applications we have to support, there is also a bit of a challenge around scale. Um, on any typical day, you'll see that we have more than 50,000 data pipelines running across our uh, data processing systems. All of these um, systems crunch more than 200 petabytes of data every day. To be able to support this processing framework, we also need to have storage systems. And we have um, our data lakes and data warehouse, each with more than exabyte of uh, storage needs. The data continues to grow every day. And uh, typically, on any, any given day, we see more than 7 trillion input events coming into the system. Right? So given these challenges, you can imagine the data processing team is always at the constant challenge of improving, um, improving the systems to be able to support our customers. We always think about stream and batch processing. Uh, we had uh, using we had been using Lambda architecture quite a bit and tried to solve this before with providing a abstraction layer with open source software such as AlgeBird or Summing, Summingbird and SAR libraries to make it easy for our developers. We constantly evaluate the uh, frameworks itself to be able to like utilize like to get more performance out of it. Keep exploring different new technologies, Spark, Flink, Hive, Tez, you name it, we have explored and then evaluated. Also about like new APIs, like Beam, Shio, uh, uh, Streaming SQL. These are some of the things which like more, as in, as in when we uh, explore them, more use cases um, start popping up for us. As a platform team, we're also worried about these um, execution frameworks to constantly improve them uh, around the stability, like the metrics or debuggability, and providing tools for our developers. Right. Sometime back, uh, data platform team members, along with our uh, customers, started to make a group and tried to say, okay, let's evaluate 
the data processing landscape within Twitter and what was available outside and happening in the community. We considered Spark, Beam, uh, Flink, various different tools, uh, and tried to evaluate it across various different dimensions, starting from the API it, uh, it exposed, uh, whether it's a streaming, batch, or unified, and what kind of tools uh, and languages the API supported, how easy it is to migrate our existing pipelines to a newer API. We also evaluated the platform offerings, uh, like what kind of runners are available, uh, what is the stability of that, and the adoption of those runners. We also looked at, like, if we were to adopt a data processing framework, how does it integrate with the ecosystem? For example, a data processing um, framework cannot live in isolation. It has to interact with, say, a message bus, a data lake, a data warehouse, um, or a key value store. Like, how does what kind of like integrations are available for us? And more importantly, as we adopt into Twitter, there are many in in-house uh, solutions also built within Twitter. Like, we have our own metadata system. We have a security model monitoring at scale. So how do all these open source software integrate with Twitter was another uh, criteria. And we also thought about, like, we don't have to get to a place where one solution can solve all the problems. There might be certain use cases which are specifically uh, tailored to address some of the, uh, 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 the technologies are specifically tailored to address some of the use cases, specifically around uh, machine learning. Towards the end of the evaluation, it became very clear that Beam was an attractive um, solution for us. We looked at the, the unified API, which brings together uh, stream and batch processing, and the available execution framework was a very, very attractive uh, for us. The flexibility of different runners meant that we could support data processing needs um, as the company's strategy changes. Like uh, at that time, we were looking at like expanding on-prem or adopting cloud, and it became very easy for us to justify and then help our customers no matter where they are, or even like a multi-cloud solu uh, multi solutions. Uh, ability to support different programming languages was a, a plus for us, and more importantly, given our interaction with our open source community for other projects um, and looking at the strong open source community at Beam became a very, very attractive to us. Um, one of the early adoptions, what we saw was uh, by our ad engagement analytics platform. This was a platform which had like various different components, both streaming and batch uh, components within them, uh, built on a Lambda architecture at that point of time. These, the streaming component was processing millions of events per second. And uh, uh, the team started to adopt and migrate those pipelines from Apache Heron to Apache Beam. Once migrated, they utilized the same API to migrate the batch workload also, so that it became much easier and increased the developer velocity and gave a cleaner abstraction for the developers. Um, similarly, there was another uh, team which was which was trying to modernize their experimentation pipeline. These are the pipelines which were built on large um, scalding workloads, and uh, these are the scalding workloads for wherein each run would end up sorting hundreds of terabytes of data. Um, so as the data volume increased, it became a little difficult for the team to be able to manage or debug or even scale those systems. After seeing Beam, they were easily be able to like. Uh, convert those jobs into Apache Beam, and we chose Dataflow as a runner. And Dataflow, at that point, also provided more features around uh, uh, auto-scaling and liquid sharding, which became very easy towards the end of, uh, end of it for the developers to be able to manage large pipelines in combination of Beam and Dataflow for us. Many of the pipelines which used to take days started to complete in hours because of moving from, like, MapReduce based execution to uh, Beam supported uh, data flow execution, right? Having seen this right now, what we are trying to do is to solve uh, some of the challenges which we are seeing uh, today, uh, specifically around language uh, choice. Um, what has happened is the optionality also introduces a lot of questions for our developers. We have a lot of scalding jobs and scalding uh, expertise already. And then there is always a question since Apache Beam doesn't support Scala natively, uh, the only other option is uh, Shio. So whether we should choose Shio or we should rewrite our pipelines in Java. So that keeps coming up uh, all the time. 
Um, the migration is also a challenge because we have like thousands of pipelines already written in Scalding. Um, there are libraries uh, and helper functions on top of Scalding. How do we migrate all of them uh, into uh, Beam? Uh, the uh, long-term support is also something uh, people talk about, especially if somebody is coming from a Spark-heavy uh, experience, they would have been exposed to other supporting tools. So how does it compare uh, with Beam and such? Um, and more importantly, like we are looking into investing a lot more in the Twitter integration, um, specifically the metadata we have around uh, our own internal metadata system. How does adopting Beam uh, affect those changes, right? Even with all these changes, there are already a ton of adoption which has already happened within Twitter uh, since the initial eva evaluation. Uh, for all our machine learning um, and uh, feature engineering use cases, Beam has been the de facto uh, choice for our developers. Um, there are a ton of pipelines which were built to generate uh, curated data sets and metrics. And uh, these are the metrics which generate um, monthly active users and daily active users which is very interesting for some people as of today. Um, so so the, the, the pipelines which were written in batch, once converted to streaming, it became very easy for our developers to now think about uh, modernizing those pipelines from batch to streaming, uh, because the conversion has already happened. Um, so it, it, many of these pipelines have been um, migrated to Beam. We are rethinking our data replication and ingestion story to redesign utilizing Beam and also taking advantage of the ecosystem which are provided um, along with that. Many of the data analytics use cases which were before are now turning into real-time analytics. And we also have some site monitoring uh, kind of use cases uh, running on Beam, where you can monitor um, what is happening on Twitter in a sub-second latency uh, kind of environment. The ads analytics platform, which were one of our first uh, adopter has expanded uh, has expanded their scope on Beam and building more and more pipelines. Looking at this, there are also more use cases around like Twitter health or our product learning uh, platform or uh, trying to compute and analyze the behavioral analytics. All these use cases are increasingly adopting Beam uh, for us. Right? The future uh, at, uh, for Beam at Twitter looks very bright. Our goal is to see if we can migrate all the pipelines, data processing pipelines, into Apache Beam, uh, trying to unify both batch and streaming into one place so that we can increase more streaming use cases. Uh, we are investing a lot in trying to um, uh, uh, build the integration tooling uh, necessary for data delivery, like trying to get the data as soon as possible so that like, we can build more streaming first use cases, metadata integration and monitoring. And along with a uh, combination of data flow, um, we are trying to build many self-serve kind of capabilities uh, because of the features which are exposed by Beam and Dataflow in combination. And more importantly, we are more excited about the uh, community and the open source community engagements and looking forward for contributions. Um, if this is of interesting to you, talk to us. A couple of us from Twitter and also Google are here uh, with whom we work very closely. There are two talks. I'm super excited about all the talks uh, which are happening at the summit, but two talks from Twitter which I want to highlight. These are the ones which will expand a little bit more on the topics I have touched before. Um, the talk by Jenjo and Praveen is about modernizing our log ingestion and replication framework, utilizing Apache Beam and the um, ecosystem around it. And there is also another talk by Naveen, which talks about um, having Apache Beam as the backend for Scalding, uh, which means it becomes very easy for us to migrate our Scalding pipeline or evaluate or test our Scalding pipeline on Apache Beam. With that, I would like to thank uh, the organizers and everybody here. Um, I have some links here and uh, super excited to talk to more people today. Thank you so much.